Here we go. Stuart? Yes. Is imagination an important part of our uh, spiritual work? And our, is it a tool in our spiritual toolbox? You know, I, how do I answer that question? Everything is a tool if you use it properly. You know, imagination, you know, uh, you know, it's really hard to say because imagination, you know, enables you to connect with a almost dreamlike higher form of reality you know, that can become a work of art, that can become, you know, something in your future, a, you know, a projection towards where you would work in your life. It has a lot of purposes. And, you know, uh, to me, uh, whatever we use, whatever instruments we're given can help us to grow. If an imagination is just something that you spend all day fantasizing with, you know, it's not going to help you really evolve and grow inside yourself. But if it becomes something practical, you know, if it becomes something that can be used to work out your karma, to, you know, have some practical vision of the world, if it's something that you can use in order to allow your consciousness to reach into a transcendental plane, it's like dreams, you know, I mean, it just simply depends upon how you use them. I know when I wrote books, I was writing books, you know, my imagination played a very big role in creating the many of the books that I wrote. Without it, they would not have been created, but they took on a practical form, creative form, literary form, and, you know, they really, you know, took on a life but imagination just by itself, you know, it's kind of like mental masturbation. It's not going to take you anywhere. So it, it's like anything. It's like dreams, you know. It depends on how you use them. It's like uh, Shakti energy that comes in. It depends on how you use it in your life. And it can be spiritual, and it doesn't have to be spiritual, just depending upon your consciousness and your ability to use it in order to build an inner life, to connect with something of a divine or transcendental nature. You know, or just spend your time just daydreaming in some, you know, forms of imagination that you have. So I, I really don't have an answer to that question. You know, I don't think there is an answer to that question. I think in, you know, in the art world, in the music world, imagination is essential to create things. But, uh, you know, but again, it depends on how you use it. In order for imagination to become something practical, there has to be a form within which it lives. And that form is created inside yourself. The form that I always, you know, the, the, the foundation of that form is the foundation of this meditation practice that we do. It's building, you know, the chi, the power that enables the chakra system to develop. Once the chakra system develops, you know, imagination, dreams, om, you know, you know, higher energy, everything becomes, you know, uh, part of the, uh, an element in which we can grow and develop a spiritual life. So it all depends on the person, you know, and I, you know, I, and I don't have an answer to that. And imagination does open another realm of understanding and consciousness. Is it a spiritual life? I don't think so. But it can open transcendental pathways to a spiritual life.
Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I have a question. Um, uh, we're drawing the energy into the Hara, and that's clear. Yet Rudy talked about absorbing the energy like directly into the organs, muscles, cells. Um, so just could you talk a little bit about that? Look, that was a very advanced form of Rudy's meditation practice, what he was talking about. And that becomes possible when you build the hara, you build the chakra system, then you can draw energy through the palms of your hands, through each finger, through your feet. You know, every joint in your body, every muscle can draw energy. But you have to have, again, that grounding, the, 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 the fundamental chakra development makes all the things Rudy talked about possible. Understand? I mean, when he, I remember when he gave those kind of talks, and it was really an advanced level of his inner work. You know, and he was capable, and maybe, you know, and today I'm probably capable, I can, I can do that. But at the same time, it's years of building an inner life that gives you the capacity to do stuff like that. And you know he he you know he was right on with that because you can you can draw through your elbows for God's sake you know, <laughs> through every joint in your body every muscle can draw energy. You know it's you know in acupuncture there are meridians thousands of them in the body. Every one of them is an energy point that can draw energy out of the cosmos. But you need to have. The basics put in, basic development of an inner life that makes it possible to do things like that. Does anyone else have a question? Thank you. You're welcome. I hear sometimes people say to meditate on something. What are your thoughts on that? When your mind is supposed to be clear, what does it mean to meditate on something? Well, all right. Uh, look, uh, that the understanding of that is that you're thinking about something. If you're thinking about something, your mind is going to be congested. You're going to have blocks and tensions there. You're, you're going to be in your head. If you're in your head, you're blocking higher energy from coming into you. If, you're, if your mind is focused in the chakra below the navel, it becomes like a surgical instrument that just opens the very core of your being and the mind will get quiet and it doesn't have to think about anything. It will just absorb spiritual energy that will come into you. That energy will develop the third eye, which will give you knowledge, wisdom. It'll develop the throat chakra, which will enable you to communicate on a much higher level. It'll develop the heart center, which will enable you to love unconditionally in the world and live like a compassionate human being. It'll develop the foundation, the hara, the, the area right below the navel, which will give you a strong enough foundation to be able to support a spiritual life. So if you think about, you know, you're meditating on something, that means you're thinking about it. And the whole point of this is to go beyond thought, to go beyond anything of that nature, so that you can draw upon what is infinite in the universe, which is real knowledge and real wisdom that will come and flow through you and give you insights into the world, not only the, the world we live in, but the transcendental world that will enable you to develop a spiritual life. 
So the whole point of this is to quiet the mind, you know, to open the chakras so that we can receive that higher energy. So you can't meditate on something. You know, I mean, I, I've heard that before and I don't think that really works. I, I think people will really create problems for themselves if they try to do that. You can use the mind as a surgical instrument to open the very core of your being. It's the most powerful instrument you have and used consciously, it really develops chi, it develops power in a human being. That strength enables the heart to stay open, the throat, the mind to be quiet, you know, the sexual energy to move to the base of the spine, the kundalini to be activated. But if you're thinking or meditating on something, you get lost in that thing. And it doesn't matter what that thing is. They say, meditate on God. Well, you create an image in your brain of what God is. And who the hell can, you know, describe what God is? It's infinite energy in the universe. It's outside of all human understanding. It demands total surrender in order to experience it. So all that I teach and my teacher taught me is a craft. And that craft is used to develop a system inside yourself that can enable you to be able to live in the world and to be free of the world at exactly the same time. So you don't meditate on anything. You understand you become you know, a vehicle to which spiritual energy flows and guides your life. You become like an artist, a vehicle through which a great painting flows, great music flows, great, you know, they are the vehicle and they're the vehicle because they truly have developed the craft or whatever instrument they play or whatever art form they're using. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I mean, if you open, you can listen to the ohm sound. It'll come into your system. It'll open each chakra. It's the sound of energy flowing from the fountainhead of the universe from the source of all energy. That sound is creating everything in the universe. And one can hear that. I mean, all of music tries to capture that sound, you know? And if one truly is focused and you're quiet inside, you, that sound will come, it will bring with it the source of all creative energy. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? You know, what a work of art is, man, it's true. Human beings are the most extraordinary works of art that exist on the planet Earth. Everybody has so many different layers of consciousness inside them that ultimately connect them to the oneness that's the universe, all of the universe. And all they need to do is learn how to transform the tensions, the blocks, all the things that create static instead of harmony and balance.
Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? Okay, well, God bless you all. Thank you. We'll have a meditation on Wednesday. You know, try to take all this inside. You know, I mean, look, I don't plan anything I'm talking about. Usually it's a response to questions, trying to get to the source of the questions to give people at least some kind of clear answer about what it means to have a spiritual life. You know, and I listen too. You know, I'm here to grow. That's my only purpose of being here. I'm here to develop a spiritual life and I'm grateful to all of you for being here and making it possible for this growth, not only in myself, but in all of you to take place. So, you know, God bless you all and thank you. And I think it's the very amazing testament to what human beings are capable of doing if they truly work on themselves. Even if the Wi-Fi does go out. <laughs> <laughs> Figure out with my minimal technical skills how to fix these things. I thank God Isabel is here. She fixed it in a few minutes. Okay, well, God bless you all. And uh, I'm hoping to see everybody. There'll be a class on Wednesday. Have a wonderful evening and try to absorb the teachings of this meditation and allow them to really become integral to your life. I'm not saying I have all the answers, I don't. But there is a lot of Shakti and there's a lot of energy in these classes. And take it in, you know? I always kid around, it's like an Exxon station. You, know, you gotta fill your tanks with energy in order to run your life. And that's what this is about. So bless you all, thank you. Thank and you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Stuart.